Hey, it's tiny. So, I got a question for you. So, let's say something happens and you need to run. Are you prepared to take that diamond painting with you or are you going to sacrifice it and save yourself? So, think about your answer to that question. Pay attention to this video because we're going to have a little talk at the end. You just might want to take some notes. Hey everybody, I thought I would show you how I transport my diamond painting. Um, I do take my small one back and forth to work with me every day and in my profession I do have a uh, little time in between clients to work on it here and there. So I'm going to show you how I pack it up and it just takes a couple minutes. So I got this bag, regular little tote bag. And in previous video, I had shown that I have these foam sheets from a puzzle caddy that I use. Um, helps keep the diamonds from scattering around on my work desk. And I have my light pad. And I have a cord set up already to just plug that in. Okay, now. Typically, I don't put the pad on the foam sheet. There's my painting, and I happen to be far enough along now, I just have this last inch or so to finish up, and then I get to move on to my next project. So, I'm just going to show you how quickly I can get everything set up. I bought this at Michael's, 40% uh, off coupon. I think it was normally $30 and uh, got it for quite a bit less with that coupon, but I love this for um, transporting all the diamonds. So I have the diamonds inside the Packages, um, sorry about the glare there, in numerical order by DMC number, which corresponds to the numerical order along my chart. Um, and I put them in numerical order on my foam sheet. Next, I have my little cosmetic bag. Um, these bags both came from Sally Beauty Supply as free gifts, but uh, this was perfect for holding all of the tools. I created my own uh, drill pen uh, from just a regular um, retractable ballpoint pen that had a, a grip on it, and it just so happened that the end with the clicker um, was the exact diameter as the drill pen, so I just snipped off the drill pen there you go, and shoved it in. So I have my single and triple on one pen that's comfortable. I have one little jar that came with the cosmetic tote um, and I keep my oddball and my junk diamonds so if, occasionally I'll find one laying around here or there and I just throw them into the 
the scrap jar. I suppose when I'm all finished with the project, I'll throw away the bad ones and anything that I can match up to a color easily, I'll dump in the regular bin. Now I just use regular scotch tape um, along the edge where the adhesive peeks out beyond the diamonds to keep the uh, dust and lint from sticking to it. So I just put a strip of scotch tape all the way around. So I won't pull that out for good, but I just do, I do keep it in there. A pair of tweezers. I just have a regular teaspoon from the kitchen drawer to scoop out diamonds to put in the tray. I have several drill pens that I made out of just regular ballpoint pens. And then um, I do have the, the bigger drill pen, have not yet had a chance to try it. There's not enough big areas on this particular painting to give it a try. But I did try the three drill and so far so good with that. Absolute necessity for me. And my little re reclosable jar of wax stays nice and um, doesn't dry out in here. And I figure once it's empty enough, I can take the wax that came with the paintings and just throw another chunk in there. And do you have a tape measure in case, you know, I need to measure something and, uh, well, doesn't everybody carry a tape measure in their purse? I carry mine in my diamond painting bag now. Okay, and then this is something that um, comes in handy at work. They're just little magnet clips. And what I do, because I work in a cubicle, I plug in my power source and I run the power cord through the clip and um, put the magnet on the filing cabinet drawer so that when I'm taking calls and talking to customers, I'll unplug the light on my light pad. Yet it's just hanging just below where the pad is on my desk so that it's easy to grab. When I'm at work, I would use this the other way around where the plug is um, facing me and then the magnet holding the cord just below the edge of the desk so that I don't have, because this does get a little warm um, and mine wasn't the best quality. The cord, if it bumps a little bit, it tends to shut the light off. I don't have a dimmer switch or a power. It's just unplug plug. It's pretty simple. So I'm not sure how long it's going to last. It seems to not be the best um, quality light pad, but it was, you know, like $22 or something. So for now it works for me, but I do keep those in my bag. Scissors, never know. And then I have a Sharpie for um, writing. I, what I did do with a different kit that I finished already, on the inside of the lid of each of the colors, I put a little piece of a post-it note with the symbol because what I tend to do is I'll open the little bin and then I can't remember what symbol this is. And rather than having to look down the chart and figure out which symbol it is, I was putting little post-it notes on the inside with the symbol that corresponded. And I found that it's really not difficult to just pick the diamonds straight from the little bins. So sometimes I would have several of them open and just going straight from the bin into under the diamond painting. You know, I'd have like all seven of them open with the symbols facing me here and I would just do that. So um, I found that that wasn't bad. The bins have uh, flat bottoms on them. So just shaking it a little. And this particular kit had quite a bit of static. So I don't know if you can see that, but the beads are actually kind of all plastered right along the side here. So just kind of going in on an angle, I was able to just pick them up or just straight from the bottom. But I found when there was just a couple
spots for each color. I would just open them all up with the little symbol showing on the inside of the lid, the number on the outside of the lid, and just go at it. It worked out really well. That's pretty much it for my, my little kit here. Um, extra pair of reading glasses, a little stronger prescription strength for um, being able to see the really, really fine stuff. And that's what I've got. So you can see, you know, it really doesn't take any time at all for me to get set up because I have everything kind of organized really well and conveniently stored so that it all just kind of closes up, folds up, and it all fits very easily in my little bag here. So um, I figured what I would do now is just probably go along and finish this owl so that I can get to my next one because I... If you haven't seen it, I got a, a haul the other day, five paintings arrived, and I'm really excited. I haven't tried a square diamond yet, and I'm all set up for starting that one. Okay, so I'm hoping that that setup is going to work. Uh, this is the first time I'm really trying to get it really good for the overhead shot, so, and, uh, Forgive me if I end up not realizing that it's completely blurry or, or something. It's, it's all trial and error here, so let's get started. All right, so. Okay, so I tend to start numerically at the top and I'll do all of that color all the way down so I'm just trying to figure out where I left off when I left for the day at work so I can see I didn't finish the letter F number 15 of 38 so I believe that's where I left off so I'm going to pick up there and there's quite a few of them right in this little area so I'm going to actually put some out on the tray rather than picking at them now the other thing I really do like about these um, these locking boxes is that I don't need to use the little teaspoon that I originally pulled out of the drawer for this because they'll all stay closed as long as you're sure that you've secured them and I can just pour the color that I want and put it back and shake shake Alright, and we're off and flying. So I've just got a little section of F over in this area that I need to finish. So I'm just going to do that real quick and uh, try and find something to talk about. Let's see. So I guess I could give you kind of the basics about me. I am... How old am I? I? I always gotta do the math because I don't keep track anymore. I'm 46. And I've uh, been married for, here we go again, gotta do the math. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those women who doesn't keep track of birthdays and anniversaries and all that stuff. Um, I think we were married in 2011 think. I always have, it takes me like 10 minutes to figure it out every time, but I believe 2011. So this year will be our seventh anniversary coming up um, this August. We met in 2010 and I am one of those match.com success stories. Met online and um, he proposed on our one year anniversary. We were married eight months later. So it was pretty short courtship, I guess, as far as those things go. But, you know, when you're in your late 30s, early 40s, I guess you've lived enough to kind of have a better idea of whether or not somebody is right for you. 
and we knew pretty quickly that we were kind of head over heels for each other. So it uh, didn't take a real long time for us to, you know, start living together and blending with families. He has two sons and I have three sons. So between us, we've got five boys. Uh, my oldest is on his own, been out of the house for a while. And uh, the next two in line in age are my husband's two kids. They currently live with us. They are 18 and 20. And then the last two are my boys. I have twin boys. Um, they are 15 and they'll be um, getting their driver's license, I'm assuming, pretty soon coming up uh, this, this summer. And they live with their father. Um, so I, I do miss them a lot, but uh, that's a different story for a different time. So uh, we've got two kids in the house right now. I'm just looking to see if I have any of these. I don't see any of that one. So eight. This is so hard. So anyway, um, yeah, we've got the two boys at home. They will. Um, one of them is going to go off to live on campus this fall. At the college is going to be going to, and the other. The older of the two, his school is um, not too far away, so I think he's going to continue to commute. The younger one, I think he really wants to get out on his own, spread his wings, and uh, experience, you know, college life. So looking, he's looking forward to that, and I'm excited for him. I had a lot of fun in college. Those are also stories for another time. I think we need to get to know each other a little better before... You know, I go into all that really, really embarrassing stuff. But so those are the basics about me. Um, let's see what else do we have? I'm trying to think of something to talk about. and think at the same time, which is not, not an easy thing for me to think and analyze something different at the same time. It's not, I'm not really much of a multitasker in that, uh, which does kind of bring me to an interesting thing. I heard you know, a couple years ago, you know, I worked for a decent sized company and, you know, they're always doing the human resources, little um, informational emails, like on Fridays or whatever, and, you know, little tidbits to help you organize your life better and um, how to get more done in the day. And one of the tips that they had in this was that, now whether or not this is true, I don't know. I guess it depends on whether or not you believe that uh, that saying. If if you know, if you read it, it makes it true. So everything on the internet's true, eh, whatever. But supposedly there was a study done that showed that people who multitask actually accomplish less in a day than people who do one task put it down and do the other one and put it down and go back. Now, it doesn't mean you got to do a task from start to finish and move on to the next one, but you focus on one thing at a time and you're more productive than if you are trying to come up with stories and diamond paint at the same time. And apparently these studies that they did, which I completely believe this, because if I were to just sit here and think about what I wanted to say, I'd be able to say it fairly concisely get it over with and be done. And if I was trying to do my diamond painting, I would be able to focus, find it, 
plug them in and get it done. So the, the theory was is that if I did this, stopped and talked, stopped and did this, I would accomplish both tasks in less time than if I try and do it the way I am right now where I'm trying to do both and I'm basically failing miserably at this portion of it. And then as soon as I start to concentrate on this, you're going to notice I'm going to start pausing a lot more in what I'm saying. So that's the theory. I don't know. I think it sounds good. So it kind of, ever since I read that little article about multitasking is less productive, it kind of makes me chuckle every time people say I'm multitasking or I can get a ton of stuff done in a day because I multitask. And uh, I guess, you know, for some people, perhaps that's true. But for me, I think it is true that I would get more done if I do one thing at a time. Okay, so I realized that uh, my camera stopped recording at 10 minutes exactly. And it has done that twice now. Don't know why. I've cleared out tons of memory on my phone. And uh, as you can see, when I actually finished my painting and went to stop the video, I realized that it stopped recording. So I just spent the last probably hour, 45 minutes to an hour, talking to myself. It was quite therapeutic though, but I finished my owl. So uh, I'm going to clean up from this project and store away everything for it and get all set up for the next one because I'm really excited to try a square diamond painting next. But uh, this particular painting was sent to me from the Diamond Art Club. I did a review on it. Um, it's in my videos. I'll put a link as well. But um, love, love, love the product. Um, fantastic company. That was um, the one that you may have come across in Facebook feeds or advertisements where you pay just the shipping and they'll mail you a free painting. And um, this was from them. I loved it. It was fantastic. Not a, not a single problem with the quality of this at all. Um, check out the review if you're interested. But I finished that. Um, this particular painting is, oh, let's see here, this would be exactly why I happen to carry a tape measure. So, as far as centimeters, because everything's measured in centimeters, I cannot tell you that because my tape measure is in inches, but this is an 8 inch wide by... Approximately nine and a half inches long. Now, if we want centimeters, centimeters, it is. I'm going to start at 10 because I never trust the end. I don't know about you, but I never trust that. So I'm going to go off of starting at 10. The image is 20 centimeters by 25. So with that being, you know, the approximately eight inches by nine and a half. And I don't think I'm going to have too much, too terribly much trouble finding a frame for that. Um, I'll probably end up doing some sort of framing video once I figure out what I'm going to do, but right now my priority is just starting another one because I because I'm so engrossed in just doing them right now, I don't really care about framing them. So um, I'm going to clean up from this now. 
I think I can turn this off. That's not necessarily going to be helping for the next part. But I took a little trip to Dollar Tree today and um, I love my Craftmates binder. Um, each one holds 56 colors, but there's 477 different colors for um, diamonds. And if I were to have uh, one of these for each one, and then probably two more for ongoing projects if I'm doing two at the same time and want to be able to take it to work. I'd have to have a permanent binder set for my stash. That's Jasmine growling. She's protesting. Um, and then I'd have to have a set of empties to put the diamonds for each project in and moving them around and everything. And I think it would get expensive because these, even with the 40% off coupon, you know, if they hold 56, how many do I need for 400 and 77 colors. Two of them would hold 112, so four would be 224, and double that would be 448. So that's eight of them. And then probably one more would be nine. And then a tenth and eleventh for empty ones for ongoing projects. So 11, and if I paid, you know, 20 bucks a piece. It's expensive, so I couldn't see doing that just to store the beads because my my obsessiveness, I want to have some of every color. It's probably not going to happen for a long, long time. I've been doing cross-stitch for 25 years, and I still don't have every single DMC color. But So I bought these, uh, 10 for a dollar, and I wanted something that was rectangular, um, they have lots and lots of different round ones, but I wanted to be able to stack them, um, whether it was straight up and down or sideways if I choose to do that. And I thought I, this was just kind of the best option and the cheapest. So I'm going to try this, see how it goes. I don't know. Well, we'll give it a try. But uh, I'm going to essentially move my diamonds. They're all labeled with the DMC color and these labels um, I didn't use a label maker I actually just cut the number right off of the bag it came in and taped it with scotch tape to my containers because I wanted something that wasn't going to leave a lot of sticky residue when I pulled it off and I'm thinking you know it's what I had on hand at the time so I'm hoping that it's not going to leave a big sticky mess no it comes off pretty clean um, some tapes leave the gummy residue, so I wanted something that was going to be easy to take off. And I might just reuse these labels on these bins when I transfer them over. But uh, that's the idea. I'm not going to bore you with watching me do it, but that's the idea for that. And then my next project I'm going to work on is going to be... Pardon me. I've got it all set up and ready to go. Um, I've got the slip from the original um, inventory sheet here. And I put this little tab on to make it easy to get out because it's kind of hard getting it out of there. But I've got the picture of what the project is. And then I've got the binder all set up with all of my DMC colors for that in numerical order and the symbol chart um, attached as well to the spine on the inside of the binder and it was too long so I just folded it over so that I had that there for reference. However this fabric, my little sticky tabs don't really stick to the fabric but it's good enough for now. But I am all raring to go on this one. I've got it all set up and this took quite a while just emptying all of my bead bags into this. So I want to get the one I just finished put away. I also have the remnants of my first diamond painting, the diamond dots, to put away. Those did not correspond 
to D and C. Um, but I'm going to chuck them against these from the um, Diamond Art Club and see if any of them match up. And if not, I'll probably just put them aside somewhere because they just had like A1, A2, A3. They didn't have DMC numbers. But I want to, I'm frugal, I want to reuse them if I can. So if I can match them up to something, I'm going to. Otherwise, I'll just put them somewhere else and use them on some other kind of crafty little project because I won't be able to use them in diamond painting for uh, one of the ones that's DMC if they don't match up or if it's, let's say the size of the actual diamond is, is not quite the same so but can't throw anything away because I'm uh, I'm kind of a hoarder wannabe so hoarder who likes organization all right so uh the OCD kicked in and I wanted to show you how I ended up organizing everything. Um, so I keep yawning because it's after midnight and I'm tired, but I wanted to do this now because uh, I'll forget later on in the morning. Um, but anyway, I put away two paintings worth of diamonds. One painting was uh, numbered according to DMC. The other painting was not. It was a different method, but um, I fit everything in this one little square of my cubby. We've already seen my toolkit. Okay. I've got now an empty binder for putting a, um, a whip in, so I can put something that I want to work on there, and this one's all ready to go, so that's full. But this is what I came up with for storing leftover drills. It's an old box that I had bought um, at Hobby Lobby or Michael's a couple years ago. It's got like a Velcro. It's standing on end. This is actually the top and the bottom's facing the wall. So I stood it on end, but it has a Velcro closure. But here's what I did. So it's two um, containers deep. I put the DMC in the front for now. Um, behind this little row, you can see there's a whole bunch of the little prepackaged drill pen um, kits that come with the paintings. And then behind my DMC row, I'm trying to do this while looking through a camera, but let me just pull a couple. Back there, I've got the, the ones from the diamond dots that didn't correspond to DMC. I think that the colors will match something, but my eyes are tired. It's too late at night for me to decipher color right now. So I put those in the back. And again, this would work a lot better if I had two hands. Seriously. I'm way too tired for this. But um, yeah, so I thought this was kind of clever for storing it. Um, and I think those bins are going to be plenty big enough to hold a, a good quantity of diamonds. Not that you should have that many leftovers, but, you know, I suppose if, uh, let's say you had, like, I think Citerisa said she's going to have something like 28 bags of 310. You could keep the extras here and just refill the the ones the the craft mates the locking ones as needed you know keep your back stock in here but I thought that was kind of cool and I like the fact that it's very well organized and tidy and it all fits in one little cubby hole within my shelving unit and pardon me, I'm like reaching behind my back trying to find these where I set them down. But uh, I thought that was kind of kind of cool that it all fits right in there, and you know, it's kind of like a hoarder's paradise over here. I've got you know. 
Just think, if I got rid of all that other craft stuff, how many more diamond paintings I could have running at once, but that'll do for now. So, anyway, I just wanted to share that before I lost all of my steam and collapsed, so. I'm ready for your answer. Do you have a bug out bag for your diamond painting in the case of an emergency? Or are you saying diamond painting? Who cares? I'm going to save myself. Well, if that is your answer that you're going to save yourself, then you are in the wrong place. We just may need to rethink this relationship we got going. I am screwing with you. Oh, it is too easy. So, if there's any information there that you found useful or you got some good ideas too, comments. Let's have it. Bring it on. And uh, if you liked it, be sure and subscribe. Till next time.